Welcome back to another FNA, and today I want to talk about what you should animate. Because as you start being an animator, you don't know what to do. Like, where should I start? Bouncing balls, body mechanics, like what's a good list of exercises? And that's what the clip is about today. Kind of a bummer with that framing. I wanted to go back so I can show you the awesome Hilda. Should watch Hilda, that's great. Anyway, so today I want to give you a list of exercises that you can go through so that you can build on top of first easy quote unquote exercise and make it more and more complex and combine certain areas and will hopefully serve as a guide as you start in your animation career. Because you might be not out of school, you might not be able to take workshops and you just gotta work on your own. But you just need a guide because when you just can do anything, you just don't know where to start. It's almost like you have too many choices. But before I continue, hi, my name is JD. If you're new to this channel, I do animation lectures like these. I do animation analysis clips, hack analysis clips. I do rig reviews, product reviews. I do a bunch of stuff on the channel. This is the pitch at the beginning. Like and subscribe, you know how this goes. It's YouTube. But if you do like it, it helps my channel grow if you subscribe. And if not, maybe you'll do it later. I don't know. But that is the pitch. Let's get to the exercise. So the classic exercise that everybody should be doing, don't skip on this, it's the bouncing ball. I know, I know, it might sound boring, but I'm going to do a clip in the future where I can show you how the bouncing ball is everywhere. It's you really cannot skip that exercise. Now, to the bouncing ball, there are a couple of things you can do. First, you can do a bouncing ball that's pure physics. Then you can make it a bit more complicated and then add a tail. Still all physics, but you can learn about drag and overlap and it's going to be just one step above. Once you have that and you go from maybe a static up and down to a left to right, you can also add an obstacle course. Still all physics driven, but it's going to bounce around, hit certain objects and just make it more complicated in terms of interactions. Now, once you have all of that, you can add squash and stretch. But still in terms of just somewhat physics, it just falls and does things, but you can add some squash and stretch. Once you have that, now you can add character. So your ball is alive and it's just not bouncing around. It is deciding where to go, reacting to things and so on. And there's a great example that I always love that has everything combined and it goes through a heavy ball, a little ball, a ball with a tail and it has acting. It just, there's a bunch of stuff in there. And it's just one of my favorite exercises that shows that you can take a bouncing ball and really do a lot with it and tell a little story. And it goes through so many principles and you should be able to do something like that before you move on to characters, as in like biped or creatures especially. It doesn't just have to be a bouncing ball in terms of an object. You can go with the cube, uh, some rigs out there that have like a juice carton with a little straw, because you can also continue to other objects that are technically not alive. It opens up the whole area of like anything that is just an object, give this character and make it think and make it come alive. But at one point you're going to transition to humans. Another class example would be a pendulum, for instance. So there's just different things in terms of mechanics, in terms of overlap, and just things that you can add on top of the basic bouncing ball or just objects so you can learn familiar techniques and just how things break in terms of joints and stuff like that. But at one point, you're going to transition to humans. Now, a classic thing is to go from bouncing balls and all those extra things to then a walk cycle. But walk cycles, despite being short, technically in terms of the frame range, they're hard to do. Walks are really hard. So I personally, I would recommend that you go from bouncing balls and objects and all that stuff to humans, but body mechanics and keep it a bit simpler. So since you've done a bouncing ball, the classic thing to do is a jump. So a jump with a human could be something. Now you can have a character jump in place, jump from A to to be jump over a cliff, jump onto something higher, jump to something lower, many things. You can also do a fall that could start high and just fall down and you're getting into some more complex mechanics. Of course, acting things that will also help. So you can do a stumble or character fainting. So anything where a character falls and it's still somewhat physics driven. If you notice that little trend, so it's not super character driven just yet, but it's more mechanics of multiple objects falling on top of each other and overlapping and stuff like that. Then another one that I love that I give to my students all the time is the sit down assignment. So sitting down onto a chair, but also getting out of a chair. So sitting down and getting out is just a classic example because you have weight and you can also start adding character just because of how you sit down. Are you tired or happy, exhausted, but more about that later. Want to make it more complicated? You can walk up the stairs or walk down the stairs or a ladder, like anything where it's a different mechanics of stepping or holding on to things. Again, you can just expand that into many, many more complicated versions of this exercise. It could also be climbing over something. That could be maybe a kid climbing onto a couch or a, you know, a human, an adult size getting on to a rock, like climbing onto and over things. So it's not the cubes, it's not a normal flat object that you have to hold on to, but it's a bit more organic and just unevenly shaped, which will then change your posing and add some asymmetry, just more complexity to your posing and your mechanics. 
make it more complicated, you can have a character swing right from A to B over something into water, like in this example. So you can start adding objects where maybe you step onto a ladder and the ladder swings over from like, you know, one place to another place. So again, you can think in terms of it's a variation of a previous assignment or previous exercise and mechanic. And now build on top of that with more complex motion and complex objects and combine all of that. Now, a classic exercise, of course, is a weight lift. So lifting something, pushing, pulling, and that could be something light, something kind of somewhat medium heavy and something really heavy. A weight assignment is just a classic thing. You should definitely not skip that. It's just like a bouncing ball. It's like one of these classic assignments because it's difficult to portray weight. So do not skip that one. Now, if you want to do something where you can actually look at reference and maybe it's not you, but some reference you find online, you can pick any athletic activity, right? It could be someone running, sprinting, jumping, pole vaulting. It could be soccer, tennis. Do so you combine a bunch of sports and then you still have all the principles like basketball, right? You will have something where you have a throw with the mechanics of body, like arm moving that with the shoulder and the body, but also jumping. Look at sports as a big inspiration for body mechanics. And then for something more actually driven, you can go into fights. So you have a lot of reference out there that you can check for inspiration and just to see kind of how they do this. And it gets very, very complicated and really creative in terms of how they fight. So that's, again, another extra level that you can add. Another thing that has helped me a lot in terms of just exercises and like finding inspiration is to look at sets. I'm a big fan of looking around and finding either CG sets or just checking online in terms of structures and building that in CG in a very simple way. But for instance, you have like this image of the stairs. I found this a long time ago. And to me, it's like, that would be really cool to run up or run down. And speaking of which, it's a great test for Klaus. It has everything in terms of mechanics and changes of timing and just complicated moves. It's just really cool and inspiring to see this. So I would look at sets for sure in terms of inspiration in terms of, oh, I can have a character jump over this, walk over there and so on and so on. Now your movements don't always have to be big, right? So you have sports and fighting and everything, but you should also practice just gestures. So it could be grabbing something, could be a glass of water. I have my ginormous jug of water here. You can also start adding props, and that would be a different thing about constraints. I can do a different clip about that later. But if it's say a hat, putting on a hat, taking a hat off, or being more intricate, and you can put in a puzzle piece or taking certain smaller pieces apart that gets into more detailed finger animation, or just opening and closing a door or being affected by a door. Again, it doesn't have to be full body, it could just be halfway, but it's still a different type of mechanic and different with handles or big things you have to grip. So different types of doors, again, different types of shots. Or getting in and out of something. It doesn't have to be a chair, so something more complicated like a car because you have to get out of that. You have to hold on to things or it could be like a really tight airplane seat or you're in a bathtub. So it's something slippery. So think about objects where maybe the surface properties are also adding a certain twist or animation. So it could be slippery, sticky, hot, cold, stuff like that. Now, these are all technical things like right? body mechanics wise. Now you can take all of that and start adding emotion on top of this. So if you grab anything, is it because you're in a hurry? Because you're excited? Because you're angry? Maybe you're tired. So all of those exercises, there you can add different kinds of emotional layers on top of that, which goes into gear change, right? You can have a character to go from happy to sad, from confused to, uh, you know, not confused, having an idea or being shocked. So changes of an emotion or just a general change where you see thought process, that is definitely important to practice. And it's not just in the face, this goes into pantomime. So you don't use audio just yet, but you're using full body body language for pantomime actions. So anything that you just thought about in terms of mechanics, jump, grabbing something, now put a little story on top of that with the character thinking and behaving and reacting. And now it's really just a silent body acting. And the good thing is you can act that out. So in the bouncing ball, you know, yes, you can find reference, but all those object things are a bit trickier. But now you're in the land of filming yourself or filming someone else as your, as your acting buddy and start planning things out, shooting reference. And then now you have this whole world of pantomime. And once you have all of that, and again, this list is getting really long, then you're getting into audio. So now you start lip sync. But I wouldn't go into like a 10, 20 second long lip sync piece. Pick short things, a couple seconds. It could be just a yell, even just a cough or someone laughing, just short. And then you get into a sentence or two and a bit longer. Then you got one character, two characters, a back and forth. They could be yelling at each other. It could be something off screen to react to. So the lip sync world is huge. I do have a clip about what to choose in terms of audio pieces, because you don't want it to be offensive or something where you can't understand things or with heavy accents where you where you just kind of confused and you're almost distracted from the animation. So there's also a couple of guidelines in terms of what you want to choose. If it's an exercise, you know, again, that's what this is about. It's a bit looser, but once you go into the demo reel department, you gotta be careful what you choose. 
And then also think in terms of framing. So your lip sync could be like this, framed like that, but also try something where it's a full body thing. You won't see all the details, but it's still important to be able to have a full body animation work with audio and that timing of it. And once you have done all of these separate ones, like I said before, you can start combining things, actions and emotions and pantomime and audio. You can do something super complex. So if you go back to sports, let's say a tennis player loses the game, screams in frustration. So you have your audio in there and then breaks a racket. So a lot of mechanics and weight and audio. And after that frustration, falls on his knees and then starts <laughs> walking on his knees towards the referee. So it's not just a walk, but it's walk on your knees, different kind of mechanics. So you can have it knee fall and then crawl back on the knee. And then you can have him crawl to the referee and they're usually on, on like, you know, chairs and like higher up, but they can hold on to things. They can pull the referee down. They can hold on to the referee. So you start having interactions either with props or with a different character. Referee doesn't care. So now you're just pantomime. They don't say a word. Your player gets up, frustrated, walks away. Now you're getting into another walk. And then as they walk away, you can start adding camera animation. So we pan with the frustrated player, revealing the winner who's just standing in the background and the reporters are there, fans are rushing towards. So you have now crowd animation and more contact and walks. And you could add more sound to that where maybe the winner is saying something and you have fans shouting. And on top of that, you can start cutting it up into separate shots where it's a wide shot, a close up and so on and so on. So as you can see, you can take all these exercises, make them so much more complex, combine certain things. So you will I mean, again, it goes into the whole thing of there are too many ideas, but you can see how you can start small, basic principles, just the bouncing ball to something super complex. Now, that is also just for humans. Now, take all of that and go into the animal kingdom. And now you want to animate creatures. Now, again, I have a series about creatures there. So watch that as well. But take all of this and think in terms of how does the creature move? What is the creature's anatomy? Does it have wings or a tail? Is it small? Is it big? How is it reacting to other creatures or creatures with humans? The possibilities are endless. But whatever you do, do not skip the basics and keep the shots short. I'm going through again different classes right now that I'm teaching and you can see despite the advice of keep it short, some students stick with 10, 15, 20 seconds and it's just too much. It's too much to do. You don't have enough time. You might get into maybe a blocking plus pass and then after the next assignment, you don't have enough time to polish things. So really keep it short. A couple seconds for just a gesture, a move, maybe three to five seconds because you want to go through the whole process and practice the whole aspect from beginning getting to final polish. And if you want to see what the end result is of all this, check out animation schools, right? Animation mentor, anim school, anim squad. They have their show reels of all their students. So check these out. These are the top of the top students. And that is your reference point of that's where you want to get to. And then if you know where you want to work or you have your dream company, look at that company's output. So what is their portfolio? What are the kind of movies or TV shows or whatever you have? And all of that is serving as a guide again, as your long-term goal, but do not skip the basic exercises. And in terms of rigs, I have animation be faced. So check out that site. You can go through. I have all kinds of rigs from like beginner stuff to more advanced from creatures. So anything that's out there, there are paid ones, they're free ones. So that should also be a resource in terms of what kind of rig am I choosing? And that's going to also inform the type of exercise because you got to make sure that you don't have a certain idea and then the rig doesn't work for that idea. So there's kind of a back and forth in terms of testing the rig in terms of movement or your ideas and then get into that exercise. Now, as noted in the title, this is part one. Why? Because exercises are different than a demo reel shot. And I have a whole demo reel series. Again, I've got a bunch of stuff, but I still want to do a part two that's going to go specifically into demo reel exercise. How do you take that exercise and tweak it? I talked about it before, but it's worth mentioning other things on top of that. So this goes into my demo reel playlist as well, but it will be a part two to this clip. And if you are starting out and you want a guide where I can help you go through exercises and critiquing, you know what the pitch is, my workshops. And my workshops are exactly for that. So if you need a guide, you're starting out, you need help, you can sign up at any time. I can suggest exercise. I can see what you're doing already. And I can critique that and add exercises, suggestions on top of that. So link in the description, all information, you can sign up at any time. You can start whenever you want. My workshops are always open. And speaking of time, as always, thanks for watching till the very end. I hope you're still watching. And if so, thank you. Thank you for your patience. And maybe I convince you to subscribe. And if you do, thank you. Hit that bell button so you won't miss any of my uploads. And that is that, I think, for the whole clip. So thank you again. And hopefully I'll see you in my next upload.